I'm over in our side yard grabbing the supplies that I need for the next project that I want to show you how to make. And it's right there. See those picket fence sections? I'm going to grab some of those, get them cleaned up, and we're going to make something really cute for your home. If you're new here, my name is Cindy and I'm with Reinvented Delaware. We love to reinvent and repurpose all sorts of furniture and home decor and make fun things out of reclaimed lumber. That's what we're going to do today. So our side yard is on that side of our property and my workshop is here in the garage. And I've already started to work on getting these pickets, some of these pickets cleaned up and taken apart. I'll show you here in a second, but let's look at this little fella. Bark, bark. All right, so you'll hear him barking in the background. I've already taken apart one of the sections and here are the boards leaning over near my um, my workbench and if you haven't seen my work area before this is kind of the state of, of my work situation it's just the way that it is anyway um i used a hammer and i hammered out the the nails that attached the railing on the back of each picket to hold these sections together and then when they were all separated and i safely removed the nails made sure i disposed of the nails you know in, in a safe way i used a hard scrub brush and some bleach water because these were green what you saw over there some of this was really pretty green and i wanted to get rid of that so i sprayed them down with bleach water and a scrub brush got the hose out and i just really scrubbed them now they're going to sit here all night and just dry i had to put them indoors just getting ready to rain and they're going to dry and then tomorrow we're going to make something really fun out of these so it's the next day and let me tell you where I am on the project. I, I went ahead and took all of the pickets, I completely dismantled the sections. I used a mallet and just tapped off the, the pickets to remove the railing part of the picket so that it would all come apart. So there are no more railings holding these together. It's just all the single pickets. And then once they were completely taken apart, I laid them all out in my driveway and I got a solution of bleach water and a hose and I bleached them out to get rid of all that green, the fungus that is on, this is a reclaimed fencing. So you're going to have that. So I sprayed them all down. I used a really stiff scrub brush. I scrubbed them really well with the scrub brush, rinsed them off really well, and then it was getting ready to rain at our house, so I couldn't let them dry outside. I set them upright in my workshop, and they've been drying ever since, so they're completely dry now. Now it's time to cut these pickets to the size that we need. Now it's time to measure and cut our three pickets. We're going to be using three pickets for the sign that we're going to make today, and I need to measure the amount that I need for the spot in my, at my home where I'm going to hang it. I think that it's best for this for my boards to be about 34 inches in length so I'm just going to use my tape measure at the end of the picket and I'm going to mark the 34 inches I think that'll be a good size I'll use my chop saw here to cut the the pickets all three of them at the same time if you don't have a chop saw you can also use a jigsaw or a hand a handheld circular saw if you do that Either one of those saws, make sure that you use this tool here. This is a carpenter square that has this lip on it here that you can put on the edge of your piece of, of your board and then line it up with the mark that you just made here. And then you can draw a line and you have a straight line to cut. If you're using the chop saw, you don't need to make that uh, line because it's you've got this fence. Well, here, let me just show you what I'm going to do. On a circular saw, you can take the straight edge of the board that you have and line it up with the straight edge of the uh, back of the circular saw. This is, I believe it's called a fence. So I can just line that up exactly along this here and I'm pressing against there to make sure. Then I can use this tool here to hold that board together and then I can bring my saw down and cut right on that line. I'm not worried about it being exact. This is a handmade sign, so I'm not too worried about that. What I do want to do though is cut all three of my boards at the same time. So the board that I've marked, I'm going to set it aside and I will lay two more boards on top right up here. And then down here at this end, at this end, I'm going to line all three boards up with the one that I marked on top. My circular saw has a protective cover, a blade cover, that exposes itself as I pull the saw down. So when I pull the lever, it'll expose the blade and cut. And I'm going to keep my hands far enough away from that blade. This is very dangerous to use. Please don't use this around children. Okay, now it's time to attach the three boards together. And we're going to do that by using the scrap boards that are the leftover ends from these boards to, um, to as a bracket. It'll go across this way and we'll have glue and we'll use screws. I'll show you that part. First step is just measure how much we need. And this is going to be on the back side. It won't be seen. 
but I do need to know the width of it so that I make sure that I have enough room. So all I'm doing is laying this board and lining it up roughly here and I'm marking here. It's nothing fancy. I need two of them. So this will be the first one and then my pickets were long enough that I'll be able to get the second one out of just one of these boards and I'll have these boards from the other two pickets left over for another project. I'm going to flip my boards over and there's definitely a front and a back. This is the front of the board and it just has the old nail holes. The back has markings from where the railing was originally that I removed and I don't want that to be the front side. So each one of my boards I'm going to turn around like that and I'm going to make sure that they're lined up pretty close. I'm not too worried about perfection here. This is a handmade sign and I'm bringing them all closely together and I'm going to hold them together with one of these clamps. These are these um, squeeze clamps. I'll be sure to link them. They're really handy to have in the workshop. You can move them very gently, very easily, excuse me, by just squeezing this here and you can put this on and it will be a third hand or third or fourth hand for you. And that comes in handy, no pun intended, in the workshop. So you just put it where you need it and then you can squeeze this and slide and then you use this trigger to tighten it up you don't want to tighten it up so much that they pop. That can happen. And I'm going to use one inch screws because then I know that it won't go through to the front. I don't want it to go through the front. And I'm going to use some wood glue to just make sure that it's bonded on there really well. And then I'm going to also pre-drill the holes. I like to do that for two reasons. It helps the wood not to split when you add the screw, but also I like to use this this drill bit. Let's see if I can show this to you here. This is a countersink drill bit. You can see it has a wide cutting head there. So it will actually cut a recess for the head of the screw to sit inside the board. I'll show you up close. We're going to pre-drill two holes in each board where this board here meets up with the boards in the front. I want to have two, two screws holding each one. So there and there you'll see it'll be like a zigzag. And I'm going to pre-drill them first so that I don't split any of the wood like I said. If you are nervous about this moving, uh, my board is a little bit warped, you can clamp this all together and pre-drill that way. I'm just going to kind of wing it and hold it steady with my hand and put in the first drill mark. Here is the hole that we just drilled. You can see, hopefully you can see, that it has like a, like a recess. That's where the screw head will recess into the, into the wood and it won't leave a bump on the back. And that is done by that drill bit right there. The countersink drill bit is really the greatest thing because you have the drill bit on one end and then you flip it over. It's called a quick flip, I think. I have the um, Phillips head drill bit that I use on a regular basis. You just can switch this around very quickly. There's the drill bit again. You just snap that out. That gold piece moves, it slides, and it releases that and you can quickly slip flip it around, this makes this job super easy. So I've only drilled one, but just to hold that board still, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw into the board. Next, let's put the hanger on. You can see from the front how good this sign looks. It's got the gothic shaped pickets on one end and the straight edge on the other end. I could mention that if you wanted to alternate these and have this middle board going the opposite direction, that could add a little different look to your sign. Um, for now, we're just gonna stick with this plan, but we need to figure out how to hang it. And you can either, you can hang it two different ways. You can hang it with heavy duty wire. This is a wire I get at the hardware store. I, I'll have to, I'll put the gauge of the wire down in the description below. I can't remember right offhand, but it's pretty stiff. I can get a whole spool of it for about $10, and I use this wire for a lot of our projects. Or you could use a piece of chain. You could spray paint this black if you wanted. You could leave it silver. You could really do any, anything with that that you wanted. For today, I'm going to use my standard. I use this wire on this project a lot. The other thing that you're going to need is a certain kind of screw. I'll link these down below as well. It has a a head on it. Are you able to see this here? I want to make sure that you can see this. It's kind of a specialty screw. It has a wide head on the end of it, kind of like a washer, and you need that head to hold onto the wire once you attach it. You'll see what I mean when we put these in. So I'm going to set that aside. I only need two screws. I'll pull the two screws out, and we are going to attach the screws in 
to the boards that we just added to hold it together. It's gonna to go in the back. I'm going to screw these in, but I'm not going to screw them all the way down yet. I just remembered, I should pre-drill that so that it doesn't split. Turn my drill bit around to the screw drill bit, and we're going to drill, pre-drill the holes about middle way here. You can see that I did not drill this all the way flush. I need to have room to wrap that wire around. The next step is to just measure the amount of wire that you need. I just kind of rough guesstimate this here. And I like to have a little bit of extra wire. I'll show you why. Just use your wire cutters, put that aside. And then I'm measuring so that there's about the same amount of excess on each side. But I'm going to do this on the front. So let's flip this around. I can see the two screws on either side here. There we go. And I'm just doing some rough estimate here. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to wrap the wire around that screw head. So I've got it bent around there. I'm gonna give it one nice little tightening around that screw head, bring the end of the wire to the front, and then I'm gonna tighten that screw head down. And you'll see why we need that kind of screw because it helps to hold that wire down. I have this tail here that's at the end. You can see it's got a little bit of excess here. And I just, I wanna keep that, um, but I don't want it to be straight. So I'm going to use my pencil. Let's find my pencil. Fancy tools we use here. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the pencil like this. Pull the pencil out and I have a nice little squiggly. I hope you can see that against the fencing. Now this edge here can be kind of sharp. So you can also take your pliers and turn it downwards so that it's not sticking straight out. And it leaves this little decorative part squiggle. So depending on what you want to use your sign for will of course determine what you want to put on the front of the sign. I've done a variety of things. I've done single words, words like grateful, blessed, thankful. That's just a really nice way. I'm going to talk about how to do that. Don't worry about that. We're just deciding what word we want to use. So you can use a single word like that. You could use a family name, like your last name. You could use your address, which is what I have on my front porch. I'll link the video here showing my front porch and you'll see another sign, very similar. It's much older and it's a, a little bit bigger than this one here, so you could make it any size, but you'll see the sign and what it looks like with an address. So you could do that. You could do a person's last name and give this as a gift. This is a really inexpensive gift. And I haven't mentioned up to this point, but if you don't have reclaimed pickets, you can always purchase pickets, single, single pickets at your local box hardware store, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot. I'll try to link those below. I'm not sure that I can. It's usually something you have to get locally. And they'll sell them in the back of the gardening department for about $2. So you could put this whole thing together for under $10 and put whatever word on there. They make a wonderful gift, especially if you use someone's last name. That's just a really nice gift for them to hang that outside of their front door on their front porch. There goes my dog. All right, so I got all the weeding done and I've got it on the transfer tape. There's a lot of the cricket lingo that I'm not really sure of because this is only, I've only done a couple of these projects. So I'm still learning. I'm still learning about the cricket, but it is a lot of fun to use and it's the precision of it. I mean, you just can't go wrong with that, but I just have to learn and get better at some of the techniques. Now it's time to apply that to transfer that design over to the, um, the sign that we made. And I did want to mention, since mine is um, reclaimed lumber and it has been painted, I took a fine grit sanding sponge, went over the whole surface just to loosen any paint that might be there. And then I took my shop vac and I vacuumed it really well because I don't want any of that layer of dust from sanding to prevent the vinyl from really adhering well to the sign. So let's get that on the sign. Right, the first thing that I want to do is move these little wires. I don't want this in my way. Those are the little decorative ends of the wire. I'm just going to move them out temporarily out of the way. It's nice and smooth and I'm going to pick up this design. It, it really worked out well to go on my granite because um, 
it just was a good surface to do this on and I've never done that before and I think that I will do it again. So all I'm doing here is peeling the transfer tape away from the backing. There we go. And you can see it's coming right off that granite perfectly. So that's, that worked out well. This is a challenge because it's, it's nine inches this way, but lengthwise it's about 24 inches wide or long. I don't know what word to use there. All right, so you saw that I used this uh, flattening tool. You could also use a credit card. I think this comes with the Cricut, and um, you can just use that. And I decided to go th in one direction the first round, then I went in the other direction the second round because the surface of this is very uneven. It's not smooth like it would be if it were on a smooth surface like this or on a flat piece of plywood. So I just wanted to make sure that I got it all in there. All adhered really well. The next step is to peel off this transfer tape, and I'm gonna do this slowly and I'm going to keep this in my hand and I'm also going to keep my scissors handy because at, let's see, like right here at this area where the two boards join together, there's nothing for the vinyl to stick to. So I might have to cut where these uh, pickets join together. I'm not really sure what that's gonna be like. So here's a perfect example that this part of the vinyl did not stick. So if I still have this, I can just coax it along and make sure that it's sticking down like that. Also notice I'm not pulling up in this direction. I'm kind of keeping this layer that I'm peeling back, I'm keeping it close, and I just think it's gonna peel back easier if I do that. It'll be less tension on this part. Oh look, we didn't have to cut that part there. I might cut it anyway, because it does kind of look funny, and I, I just don't like how that looks. So here's another spot that it's not, whoops. That's okay, just pick it back up. But right here is another spot where it did not come off of the transfer tape. So I'll just coax it along, and there it goes. So that was pretty satisfying, pulling all that tape off there. I do think that I'm going to cut where the boards come together, like right here on the R, or any other place that it just looks a little weird that it's connected. I think if I cut it, it's gonna look more um, like I painted on there. My sign is going to go in our covered breezeway. It's protected from rain, it's not going to get wet, so I'm not too worried about that. If your sign is going outside, make sure that you use a sealer that um, is uh, rated for outdoors, of course. I'm using Miss Mustard Seed's Milk Coat. This is a wonderful finish, I really do, do love it. It's going to seal in all the crackling paint, and it's just gonna give a little extra protection to some dampness. And I'm using the matte finish, and I love that because it keeps this old worn look while sealing it at the same time. Now this product is interesting, it's thick, like um, my friend Anna mentions that it's thick like hand cream, and it is, it's, it's not thick or thin at all, like usually when you use a acrylic sealer, it, you could pour it, it's actually thin. This is very thick, it goes on really smoothly, I really love to use this, and I'm going to seal the whole piece with this, right over top of the letters, over all of it.
I hope you enjoyed that project. Wasn't it easy to put together? I have made many of these signs. We've sold lots of them over in our vendor booth. A lot of times when I make a sign like this, I'll use words like blessing or grateful, thankful, words like that, and that turns out just as beautifully. You could do what I do in this, what I did in this case with our, our last name and representing our family and the year that we started our family. You could also use your street address if you wanted to. If you watch my front porch video, I did a little spring makeover a few videos back. I'll be sure to link it. You'll see a similar sign on our front porch so that anyone that's looking for our home they would rest assured that they're going to have the right address. I hope you enjoyed this and if you did could you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you join our journey here. I can't wait to share the next project with you. See you next time. Just as I was finishing this video I had a wonderful surprise happen. I was standing here in my breezeway and little mama bird came to feed her baby birds that are living right here in this watering can right by her back door. We're going to let them hatch and then close it up so we don't have that anymore. But it is really the sweetest little sound and the little sight of mama bird bringing her food to her babies. And if you listen carefully, you're going to hear those little birds chirping. I hope you enjoy this.